What is going on, everybody? Welcome on this special episode of The Deliberate Dropout. Today, we're going to talk about opportunity cost and what it actually takes to follow your dreams and your your desires, right? Mitchell, kick us off. What what is opportunity cost and how can one get started in understanding um, what it takes to go after what you want in life? Yeah. So opportunity cost is one of my one of my favorite concepts from economics. I think it's also like one of those things when you start to think about it in relation to the way you make decisions, the way you manage your money, the way you uh, evaluate two different choices against one another. It, it's revolutionary. So opportunity cost is basically the foregone costs when you when you choose to do one thing, the costs of giving up what you could have done instead. And so, for instance, let's use money. Money's always easy and tangible. If you decide you want to go on a vacation to Vegas with your buddies, you got $2,000 in your bank account. That's how much the whole trip's going to cost. That's your entire life savings. You spending that money to go on a trip and go do all these other things means that you are saying no to what else you could have done with that $2,000. In the short-term, immediate thing, you're saying no to saving money. And when you start to think about compound interest tied to opportunity costs, you're not just saying no to the here and now in many cases. You're saying no to a lot of the decisions that, that you impact down the road that you don't know about yet. So when you don't have that $2,000 six months from now, and a cool investment opportunity comes up, you have to say no to that because you've already made a different decision that's precluded your ability to say yes to this thing in the future. So as a as it relates to how you spend your time, this is such an important thing to think about too, because especially on this show, we talk about you know the deliberate dropout. You see so many young adults who, saw it, who are like, you know what, I'll just go to college. At the end of the day, I'll have a degree. Yeah, four years of my time, it's going to suck. I'm going to have this money. You know, it's going to cost money, but like at least I'll have the degree. I won't be any worse off because I have that college degree. And it's like, yes, you will. You gave up four years of your life that you could have been doing other things. Plus, if you took out student debt, you, you gave up the earning potential of those dollars um, that you could have been saving, the money you could have been making. The, you said no to so many other things by saying yes to this other decision. So it's not always, you know, it's not always, I, I just decided to go to college, you know, and, and everything's going to be fine and it sucks in a vacuum maybe, but, but we don't live in a vacuum. When you do that, you're also saying no to all these other cool things you could have done instead. Um, you know, you, you could have, you could have gone and gotten an awesome job or you could have gone and found an awesome apprenticeship. Now you could have only done one of those things instead of college, but the compound, uh, the compound interest of that positive decision, instead of making a negative decision really plays out over your next 10, 20 years. It, 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 you could be in a wildly different place when you're entering your thirties, because you chose to make higher value use of your time now. And so that's why I think it's such a critical thing. That's kind of the, the setup for you. That's a, no, it, it's pretty damn critical, right? Because you mentioned all those things right now. You could be doing way more important crap with your time than in a university setting, let's say. One thing that I think most people might struggle with is how do you bring awareness, though, to the opportunity cost? I'm, I don't think like it's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory. If you do one thing, Peter robs from Paul, right? If you do yeah. one thing, you're robbing yourself from another opportunity. Yeah. But oftentimes when you're so young, right, it's like most people don't even know. Most people aren't even aware of what you could be robbing them with. And yeah. I think that was my biggest, at least that was my biggest issue early on. Right. Like they like if. You said money is very tangible, right? If you don't find a home for your money, the money will find a home for itself. Yeah. It's this. It's a very similar thing when you're early on in your early teen, late teens, rather, and early twenties. If you don't really know, in in the context of college, yeah. If you don't know what you want to do outside of college, then it's kind of like you're not even aware, yeah, of truly how costly that opportunity cost is. I want to 
if, if you don't mind, maybe we could even yeah. go into that. What can, how do you become more aware of truly how, of truly how detrimental that opportunity yeah. cost can be? Yeah. And what are some other, like, you know, if, if, the, if the parkway's closed, can we take the turnpike? What are some other alternatives? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, so one of my favorite questions, this is, again, this is comes from the school of, of, of econ. Um, one of my favorite questions to always ask is like, compared to what? And so yep. when you're evaluating a specific decision, it's like, is this good or bad? Well, compared to what? Is it good or bad? You know, is relatively speaking, is college good or bad? Well, what are you trying to accomplish in the long run? You know, if you want to work in real estate or whatever, you definitely shouldn't go to college. College is probably, you know, maybe it's useful in some regards, but compared to what? Compared to all the other ways I could go about trying to achieve this specific goal, it's probably something that is going to uh, cost me more time, cost me more money, cost me a lack of experience and lack of skills, lack of income over the next four years compared to four or five other different avenues I could try instead. And so opportunity cost isn't like, you know, I could get a job, I could get skills, I could get money, I could do 10 other things versus go to college. It's I could go to college versus I could go get an apprenticeship versus I could go get work experience right now. It's comparing all those different options individually to one another and evaluating where is the best decision here, given what I'm trying to accomplish in the long run or even in the short run and and making, again, you may not always know what option set you have. You may maybe in college and you're like, you know, if I don't go to college, I don't see a clear, tangible path to, to X, Y, Z goal outside of this. And that's fine. Where I think it's critical to, to uh, take account, though, is once you become aware of other options. That's where it's like you got the kid who's, you know, young adult who's who's sophomore, junior in college hating it. It feels like they're wasting their time. And suddenly they realize, hey, there's this other thing that I could go be doing. And that's where it really starts to, to the cost really starts to eat at you too, because you're unhappy and you know there's something else you could be doing that you want to be doing more, you think is more valuable. That's where saying no to that cooler opportunity, you are racking up the, the not only the actual opportunity cost, you're racking up a, a negative debt to your future self based on where you could have been instead doing that other cooler more valuable thing instead of just wasting away in the in the current you know state that you've, you've manufactured for yourself where you're unhappy yeah yeah ab- absolutely and where can you how do you even start this how do you start this process of understanding and becoming more aware of what you can do would you say you start from your ultimate goal and then you kind of just like break it down step by step or do you just start from where you are and then kind of go from there? Like, how do you, like, maybe we could break that down. How do you, how do you start? Yeah, for sure. So I always like to invert. So sort of, you have this destination in in mind where you want to go. You may not always have perfect crystallized. Here's exactly where I want to be at age 35 or whatever, but like pick the best version, the highest fidelity, highest resolution version of that goal you have today. Even if it's a little pixelated still, you don't have it all worked out and work backwards from there. There are certain activities that are definitely going to disqualify you from that goal. I think we've talked about this in other episodes before. It's like you go to jail right now. You you go do stuff that's going to put you in jail. You're probably going to kiss goodbye to most of your goals down the road. But the, there are also, you know, in, in route from where you're at today to where you want to be, there are going to be different routes you can take. You, you're going to like probably be able to if you if you think critically give yourself some time and leeway here to sit down and think like you know what here's where I want to be over the next 5 to 10 years what are all the different routes I could take there what are all the different things I could be doing right now to help me get closer to that and that's where I think you start to tar- start to see hey maybe I maybe I have some efficiencies to gain here if I stop wasting my time doing this because I think it may work out and I go do you take deliberate action? I do this other choice instead where I, I see, you know, played out in my mind two to three years from now, I see I'm going to be tr- wildly farther ahead if I go this route. That's where it's, again, you're not always going to have perfect data or perfect information about how things are going to work out. But if you spend some time thinking critically, like you're going 
some of these some of these things are going to look obvious to you. Definitely going to look obvious to you looking back on your life. I know that's that's me now looking back, but the better you get at this, the more reps you get, the more practice you get, the better you're going to get at identifying, you know, this decision compared to this decision, which one's probably higher likelihood that it's going to be more favorable in the, in the short run. Absolutely. And it could be, this is all like, I wish I had this when I was like younger, <laughs> right? But there's so many, like, even like when you're younger, you want the instant gratification, like, how do you kind of calm that part of the mind too? Because I'm going to give you an example too. If you give, if you give an 18 year old a hundred grand, I know if you give me a hundred grand cash when I was 18, yeah, I probably wouldn't. The first thought wouldn't be, let me buy an investment property, and then that investment <laughs> property, and then that investment property can pay for my car later down the road. I would do that now as a 20. I'm turning 25 and soon, but I would probably do that now. But I'm just trying to, I'm really trying to get in the lens of the, of the 18 year old Lou and like, what, how do you get rid of those? Like just some of those, like, it's kind of like, I don't even know conditioning or the way you're wired or just youth in general. That's just how youth is. Right. How do you kind of overcome that? It's not even adversity because that's just how you're, how do you just overcome those variables? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's social pressure. You're you're 18 years old. You want to be cool. You want to have fun. You want to have a glamorous life, especially like the Instagram life that you know yep. is out there. You have all your friends who who look like they're happy. Even the ones that are in college that hate their lives. They're they're only posting. We're only sharing the happy stuff. You know, nobody's sharing like I'm so dark and gloomy here in college on Instagram. You know, <laughs> I think part of it is it's maturity, which takes time, experience, mistakes, learning from those mistakes. It is hard to, you know, think about these things probably at age 17, 18, because you know what we're, we are, uh, you know, especially if you just spent 18 years in school, like, <laughs> you're ready to go like cut loose a little bit, probably as an 18 year old in college, but it is difficult. I think the, the more you can extend your time horizon, the more, uh, the more you can crystallize what it is you're working towards the more you can sort of prioritize pursuing meaning or pursuing um, personal development over, you know, being social, having social status, being, you know, popular or, or uh, you know, any of the other kind of fleeting external, uh, external gratifiers. Like, I think that will help you. But again, I think it comes down to, to that repetition, the practice, making mistakes, gaining maturity, um, and ultimately getting to a point where you are extending that time horizon to think about the bigger picture and sort of like what decisions over the next 10 years, the decisions I make now, which decisions are the most favorable? That's a tough thing to do at age 18. For sure. For sure. When I look back now, right. I know when, when I look back, my main target was financial freedom. And I think yep. if kids can start with, like you said, it doesn't have to, it could be a little pixelated, a little, ah, I can't see, you know, but if you start with that frequency of financial freedom and you, you don't want to, you want to ultimately get to that point, that's a great starting point, right? Yeah. Now, how do you get to financial freedom? What skill set do you need? If you could start with that, that's like the second question. This is where I want to get to. And this is where I'm starting. What skills do I have? Yep. Hard skills, soft skills. And then how can I bridge the gap so that ultimately one day I could be in charge of my own financial future in between all those details of getting, you're obviously going to get tested and I'm still on that journey myself and I'm getting tested every day. Right. But if you could keep that kind of like bird's eye view of at the end of the day, everything I'm doing is so that I have agency in my financial control and I don't have to wake up and report to somebody one day. If you could keep that in mind, as like the ultimate end goal for any 17, 18 year olds, if you could keep that in mind, it doesn't matter how long it takes, but as long as you have that vision and then you could bridge the gap, like you said, how Absolutely. much opportunity cost is it going to take to get to that? That would probably help somewhat, right? What are some next steps? What can 18 year olds do now, Mitchell, that will set them up for in a favorable position, kind of like poker, like they, like in a favorable position to have a lower risk for their opportunity cost so that they could become more financially independent or just make the right decision when it comes to their education or career. Yeah. Yeah. So something very tangible, I would say sit down, 
Think about where you're at and think about where you want to be. As, as, as much information and clarity as you have today, you don't have to have it all figured out. That's okay. You probably won't. Some of us still don't. I'm, you know, I'm in my thirties now. I don't have it all figured out. It's, it's a discovery process that evolves over time. So first off, like try and alleviate some of that pressure off yourself. You don't have to have it all figured out. You're going to grow and develop over time, but sit down and, and, and be honest with yourself. Here's where I'm at today. Here's where I think I want to go today based off what I know. And think about, are there other things that I could be doing now to help me get where I want to go today? Are the decisions and and the path that I'm on right now, are the decisions I'm making, the path I'm on right now, getting me closer? Are they getting me closer uh, than other things I could be doing instead? And just go through that exercise. I know it seems like I don't want to oversimplify it because it's a challenging thing to sit down and be honest with yourself, but it really is that simple. And then if you do figure out through that that short exercise, hey, you know what? I could go apprentice under this person who's already doing something that I want to do. I, I know somebody, you know, in my instant network, or I know somebody down the street that's that's got a hiring sign out front. And I'm I want to work in that type of field down the road. Like go take advantage of those opportunities now. You don't have to wait and punt them, you know, till you have a, a degree or, or till you're in a different state. Say yes to those things today and you may figure out, hey, I can get where I want to go faster. So those are some of my closing thoughts. If you're out there. Don't don't just sit there and, and waste your time. Go do something about it. For sure. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, opportunity cost, what it takes to actually pursue your dreams, goals, anything in between. Don't get distracted with the little details. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this page. We will be back for more.